It's finally, finally happened. The Giants have signed the reigning Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell. They're going to pair him with the runner-up Cy Young in the Cy Young race, Logan Webb. This is a team that looks like it could be postseason bound and not a team that you would want to face in the postseason either. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Giants, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, sometimes more than one in a day, like, hey, today, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015. I've been hosting this show, I think tomorrow is five years, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Check us out there. Please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up button, whatever you can do to help us out. Thank you very much. And hey, guess what? The Giants have signed Blake Snell on a day that started off very poorly. Our earlier episode focused largely on the departure, the quote, mutual parting of ways with the Giants and Rennell Brooks Moon. Um, We get a lot better news tonight with the um, confirmation by multiple reporters that the Giants have agreed to a two-year, $62 million deal with the reigning Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell. Now, you know, as with Matt Chapman, this is just a well, well below expectation deal. Like when the offseason started, many were predicting between 120 on the very low end to $200 million for Snell. And he gets $62 million guaranteed does include an opt-out after the first season. And just today, we were talking about how the reported asking price for Snell was two years, at least $60 million. And I was like, that seems extremely reasonable. And if you're the Giants, why why would you not jump all over that? And they have. The Giants have wrapped up. I mean, not wrapped up. Let me just back up a second. This deal is pending a physical. Physical has not taken place yet. My understanding, uh, I think it was Susan Slusser, It's a little bit of a frenzy here, uh, who tweeted out that the physical will be on Tuesday and that a press conference would be on Wednesday. I mean, they got to hurry this thing up. Like with Carlos Correa, they waited a week before the physical. The season starts in just over a week, so there's no time to wait here. This this thing's got to get moving. Um, But the fact of the matter is, (laughs) I want to say, assuming... The physical is passed, which is usually a safe assumption. We encountered, you know, some bizarro dimension world where the physical was failed with Correa. But uh, with Snell, assuming the physical is passed, you're bringing in a guy who won the Cy Young Award last year and Logan Webb finished second and he had a 225 ERA. The peripherals were not as good. It's not like he completely, quote unquote, deserved necessarily a 225 ERA. But nonetheless, the peripherals were were still really, really good. He has flaws. He walks a lot of hitters. He doesn't pitch deep into games. But he stri- what I love is that he's a strikeout king. I think my first bullet point on YouTube is K King. I mean, strikeout king. I don't know if he actually led the league in strikeouts or not. But the last two seasons in San Diego, by the way, familiar with Bob Melvin. And so when they were looking for a new manager and they said they wanted someone who was going to be effective at recruiting, I think it's safe to say that Bob Melvin probably had an influ- influence on the signing of Matt Chapman and Blake Snell, both of whom uh, played for Matt Chapman. Snell played or played for uh, Bob Melvin. Snell last year, the last two years with the Padres. And... So over the last two seasons, 272 ERA for Snell, uh, 317 fielding independent pitching, strikeout rate of 31.7%. So that's in 308 innings. So an average of a little over 150 innings a year. So if we look at the last two seasons combined and we set the minimum to 300 innings pitched, I'm going to see where Snell qualifies in a whole bunch of categories because 
he's going to rank near the top of all of them when we combine those two seasons. And so that ERA is second. Only pitcher with a better ERA over the last two seasons, minimum 300 innings, is Justin Verlander, um, which is kind of a cautionary tale because, well, Verlander is a lot older. So it's kind of a apples to oranges type of situation. So coming up in just a minute, we're going to, this is going to be a short episode, by the way. And tomorrow we're going to go way more in depth on the signing, unofficial signing of Blake Snell, pending a physical two years, 62 million, a little bit of funny math with a signing bonus due in the third season. So we'll get into that and the luxury tax ramifications and all of that tomorrow. But coming up in just a minute, just more about Snell. What does he do to the Giants? in terms of making the playoffs and what does he do to the Giants in terms of being a team to fear if they do get into the playoffs. So we'll get into it momentarily and before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. So I'm looking. I'm checking it out right this very second. March Madness over on FanDuel. And for me, if I was a new time customer, I'd be looking at who is the most heavy favorite here and placing my $5 bet on them to win and then getting the here Stetson at Connecticut minus Connecticut minus 20,000 favorites on the money line. I'd be putting a little bet of $5 there and at FanDuel.com slash locked on uh, 200 in bonus bets if my bet wins. So again, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the net. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which is now suddenly very exciting for the Giants, or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in to all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all in the latest of the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www. Uh, Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right, here we go. We're just going to continue talking about Blake Snell, knowing that we are going to get more in depth tomorrow, but I just wanted to give an initial reaction. The, it, the instant reaction is that this, you know, People were like giving the Giants a grade of like F and D minus like a month ago for their offseason. And I said I refuse to grade them because there are these top free agents still out there. We were calling them the Boris Four. Matt Chapman, Cody Bellinger, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery. And I said Giants are as likely as anyone to end up with one or more of these guys. And then I said at various points they needed to get at least one and maybe two of these guys and they've done it. So overall, just we'll we'll get into more of that tomorrow. Just the body of the offseason, it's an A. Giants have had an A offseason from a baseball standpoint. I get there's been negatives from like a, you know, like rent, bring, not bringing back Rennell. That is not an A. But from a on the field standpoint, this vaults the Giants very much into that kind of, I think, upper echelon of wildcard contending teams. 
And so just to continue talking about what has Blake Snell done the last couple seasons, and I'm just focusing on the last couple seasons because he really seems to have turned a corner and just had awesome performance uh, with the Padres the last two years. He's had a very good career. It's not like he was bad before this. It's been a little up and down, but most recent two seasons definitely worth looking at. So the strikeout rate, let's just focus on that for a second. Let's see. Again, second in all of baseball at 31.7%. Minimum 300 innings the last two seasons. Uh, only pitcher ahead of him is Spencer Strider. Great pitcher on the Braves. And third is Kevin Gosman. Uh, so uh, the walk rate, though, 11.8%. That is the highest in all of baseball by a whole percentage point. So that's significant, right? Like you're getting... The, the you're basically getting elite strikeout rate and the opposite in terms of the walk rate. You're going to see walks. You're going to see guys on base. But the thing is, he strikes so many people out and he's tough to hit that he just doesn't allow a lot of runs as evidenced by that ERA that is second best in the league over the last two seasons. So the... I mean, we could look at a million different numbers, but how about the fielding independent pitching? Let's just see where that ranks. So Logan Webb comes in fifth on this list uh, at 3.10, and Blake Snell comes in eighth at 3.17 in fielding independent pitching. So, you know, we could look at a million different numbers, but basically you're getting a strikeout machine. You're getting a guy who walks a lot of batters, doesn't necessarily pitch super deep into games, but... Number one and number two in your in the, in the National League in Cy Young voting last season, and suddenly you look at the starting rotation, and it's Logan Webb followed by Blake Snell, followed by um, maybe Jordan Hicks to break up the lefties here, and then Kyle Harrison, who's the top left-handed pitching prospect in baseball. So you've got. Uh, the two Cy Young, one, number one and two in the National League last year at the top. You've got the top left-handed pitching prospect in baseball in the middle to back end of your rotation. And Robbie Ray coming back eventually. And Alex Cobb coming back, back probably pretty soon. Plus Jordan Hicks, plus all the young, talented pitching that they have. So this is just a great move for them. I have been banging this drum since the offseason started. You can tell I'm a little bit excited um, and it's not just like this was the only move they made. They signed a bunch of other guys. They've spent the second most money of any team outside of the total outlier Dodgers who are over a billion dollars spent this offseason when you count the ridiculous kind of money they threw at Otani and Yamamoto. But it's just uh, from a baseball standpoint, Giants have had a fantastic offseason, and it's kind of capped off here by the, the unofficial – signing of Snell. We will await the physical tomorrow. We will all hold our breath and hope for that press conference on Wednesday to actually happen. I would assume that it will. They normally do. It was just a freak thing with Correa. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow. Guess what? We're going to be breaking down Blake Snell in more detail, all the financial luxury tax ramifications and also just their offseason as a whole, talking about all the moves they've made, playoff odds that are updated, et cetera, et cetera. And just to finish my point that I said I was going to make, you don't want to face Logan Webb and Blake Snell in a postseason series. OK, so they are dangerous if they get in and they've got their guys healthy. So anyway, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. I really can't wait to be with you again tomorrow, bright and early. Thanks again for listening today to this short episode of Locked on Giants. You are now Locked on Giants.